Hello, learners. Welcome to a new week. In this week, we're going to start off with vocabulary words. We're going to look at different terms that were unfamiliar from chapter one to six. Some words are not within the book, but these words could be very helpful when writing your argumentative essay. Because as you all know for now, that criterion B is one of the Criterion D's, my apologies, is one of the hardest criteria to, sco to score a very good mark in because it highlights specifically how many words you need to use. Not only do you need to use these words, but they have to be in the correct content and context. They also have to be spelled correctly. Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to review different terminologies that could be embedded within your writing to enhance and enrich your text. These are some of the words that we're going to look at and PowerPoint presentation. Please take it your time and download it to take a look clearly on the different terms we can use. And also we're going to look at common writing errors, such as sentence fragments, and we're going to evaluate our understanding by performing the interactive activity. Then we're going to start with vocabulary words that may not be only, as I've stated before, reflective to the novel that we're currently reading. However, some of these words will enrich your writing. We're going to create a table together that will be shared amongst everyone. Self-assessors, knowledge and understanding. And click on the challenging questions to try to test your understanding of unfamiliar words and also how to use them or to formulate a meaningful sentence. All right, so if you notice, this class will focus mostly on criterion D. Similarly, our second class also will look at criterion D and B. So in language, criterion B highlights organization. So not only do you need to organize your paragraphs, but you also need to organize your sentences properly to make sure that they are logical. So when I say that they're logical, you may understand them because they're in the back of your mind, but if someone else reads them, it may be difficult for them to understand. So let's be careful with this. So we're going to understand the difference between subject and predicate and the difference between simple and compound sentences. How can we make simple and compound sentences? Because it's not really engaging and fun to read when they're all simple sentences in your text and there's there aren't any differences between them. Okay, so download the PowerPoint presentation to review the steps of how we're going to reach the end of this class. This video will help you. I really like Khan Academy. It aims to explain a lot of things that may benefit you. Click on the interactive activity to assess your understanding before you start with simple and compound sentences. All right, we're going to solve this together in groups in class. And please take your time to click on further explanation. Some of you may understand what simple compound sentences are, but when we uh when we place a link, sometimes the links have a further explanation. Um, and also they delve into different things apart from simple and compound. So you'll probably find when you click on further, you'll find com uh, complex sentences. All right, so all of these language aspects are very important before we start with our argumentative essays. So as you all know, that our main unit will highlight argumentative essays and how to write argumentative essay. Similar to the first unit, we're going to take one part at a time, deciphering it until we formulate a full uh, argumentative essay that compromises all five paragraphs. We're going to begin with the introduction and explain in depth how to write an introduction, what should be included in the introduction that is directly reflective to RTSR, which is task-specific rubric. We're going to have a full class dedicated to explain the task-specific rubric to identify the requirements within this essay and what we're looking for. Our final class will be a library visit, which is very important and essential, and it's very important to act, act in our best behavior and follow the rules. We're going to begin a research on one area that you truly like in English. So maybe perhaps some of you are interested about, in terms of synt syntax. It doesn't have to be necessarily about English. You might decide to research different areas. But if you're doing a syntax and you're doing you're reflecting something about writing, perhaps this is like a 
a tip I'd like to advise some of you who are interested in this aspect. Maybe you can research something how languages differ in terms of syntax. For instance, in English, we never start with a verb. We always start with a subject. So keep that in mind. What language could start with a verb? All right. So I can't wait to see you all. And I wish you all the best.